The first ever Qatar Grand Prix has been completed and it resulted with Lewis Hamilton winning, closing the gap on Max Verstappen in the championship and has also resulted in Red Bull closing the gap on Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship. Something else that was very significant that happened, Fernando Alonso back on the podium for the first time since 2014 and his return season to F1. Took a couple of years off from F1, uh, had a rough stretch there near the tail end of what his McLaren days, and uh, yeah, he's back on the podium with Alpine. Got himself a podium, of course, uh, back at Hungary, he helped Esteban Ocon get that win by holding off Lewis Hamilton as long as possible and that allowed Ocon to to you know keep a manageable gap on Hamilton and it, it shortened the time and then of course Ocon went on to win well today it is Fernando Alonso being celebrated by Alpine as he gets his first podium in seven years and the team's first podium since Hungary so great performance by him we'll go through the results and that stuff but there was some drama late in this race. There were some tires uh, that got blown. There was some some DNFs late in the race by Botas and Latifi. So it got a little interesting there at the end, especially with the tire situation. But the top two, once again, Hamilton and Verstappen. But going into the day, it wasn't guaranteed that it was going to be that. Before the race even started, there was drama. Max Verstappen in qualifying yesterday, along with Valtteri Botas, when Pierre Gasly ripped off his front wing on one of the curbs, he was on the front stretch and, you know, his car was almost stopped on the front stretch. There was a yellow flag in the sector and Verstappen and Botas were finishing their, their fast lap and they just kept on going. They kept on going full speed. Uh, Botas went through a single yellow flag. Verstappen went through a double yellow flag which resulted in grid penalties for both of them. Botas a three-place grid penalty, Verstappen a five-place grid penalty. So Verstappen, in a very crucial moment in this championship, lost five spots on the grid right off the bat. Had to start seventh. So, you know, if something happens, he could be, you know, this could ruin his championship cha chances, or, you know, it could hurt him at least. And he did really good. Got up to fourth or fifth by the first couple of corners and he was up to second place by lap five so very good start for Verstappen he was able to get up through those first you know few guys I think he got past a Ferrari he got past uh, Alonzo Gasly a couple other guys obviously so really good start for him uh, to get up to second and you know it was a long shot for them to win this race after the penalty but even after qualifying with how much speed and pace it looks like Mercedes had especially Lewis Hamilton had uh, after that qualifying session when he out qualified him by what four tenths of a second it looked like it was going to be difficult for Red Bull to beat him but starting seventh that hurt their chances a lot more so I think a second place finish that's got to feel pretty good if you're Max Verstappen and Red Bull obviously you lose some points in the championship the driver's championship but you did gain some points in the constructor's championship but that's really the most Red Bull could have done, in my opinion, or at least Verstappen could have done. They could have. Perez, that's a different story. But um, Verstappen did a really good job today, considering the circumstance he was given, I think. And, you know, second place is, that's the best they could do today, because Lewis Hamilton was that much better. Uh, they had a better weekend overall, and, you know, Verstappen had a grid penalty as well, so they did what they could. But, yes, uh, those last 15 laps are a bunch of tires, uh, getting punctured and stuff and all that, which was interesting. I thought there was going to be a safety car. Or someone was going to like fly off the track or something. But Latifi blew a tire in the last corner, and he had to make a whole lap, or he tried to, but he ended up, you know, pulling the car off and retiring. Botas had a tire puncture. Uh, George Russell, Lando Norris. There might have been a couple more that I'm forgetting, but there was quite a few tire punctures late in this race, and you know. It just got crazy because I think they said on the broadcast that they brought the hardest compound tires, so I would have expected less tire issues, but there were some tire issues at the end. Luckily, nothing too significant, no bad crashes or anything, no safety cars that majorly impacted the race, but uh, yes, it did impact some people's race, but not the overall race itself, but uh, yeah, I mean, there there's really nothing much else to talk about this race. It was pretty... Pretty uneventful for the most part. Nothing too crazy that happened, but I guess it's time to look at the results. Lewis Hamilton, what, his 7th, 8th, 
win of the year. He's had a really good year, obviously. Uh, he's had some highs and lows, though. It has not been uh, a typical Mercedes dominant season like they've had the past few years. They have been, you know, at times the second best team to Red Bull, but these past couple of weeks they've really shown what they are made of, shown their speed, shown how good they are. And they've won two straight races with Lewis Hamilton. They have cut the championship lead from, I think it was 19, 21 points going into, into Brazil. And now it is down to eight points. Eight points going into Saudi Arabia in a couple of weeks. I hope they got that track fixed up or completed. I know they were having some, you know, I don't know if it was problems, but it's cutting it close in terms of the... Uh, completion date for that race so hopefully they finish that racetrack by the time the race weekend comes but uh yeah Lewis Hamilton with another win I think it's his 102nd in his career correct me if I'm wrong there but uh yeah I mean they did everything right this week and they were the fastest car in qualifying they were the fastest car today and they you know just coasted to victory basically I mean there's not much more to it uh, they didn't have to do what they did last week at Brazil. They didn't have to charge through the field. They didn't have to make a late pass on the championship rival for the lead. Hamilton got a great start right off the bat and pulled away. I mean, that's that was literally his day. Great start, pull away, dominate the field. Um, so yeah, Lewis Hamilton wins this thing. Good job, Lewis. Second place, Max Verstappen, as we talked about earlier in the video. Really did a good job concerning the circumstances. I mean... He entered this day on the front row, or when they woke up, he was on the front row. And, you know, that if they could have gotten a really good start, gotten a jump into turn one, maybe taken the lead, but it would have been difficult to hold Hamilton off. But, of course, the grid penalty, of course, took away any possibility of taking the lead early in this race. And so, at that point, I think second place was the goal, and they got second place. So, Red Bull, or Max Verstappen more specifically, you want to win every race, and you know you want to extend that championship points lead, but today it would have been a very difficult, and uh, I think second place, along with the fastest lap, you got to be very happy with that, uh, even though you did lose those points. Third place, Fernando Alonso, as we said earlier. His first podium since 2014, his re return year, what are they coming calling it, comeback year? Um, great performance by him, a great podium. What is that, career podium number, number 90? Eight. I don't know if Google's already accounted the podium from today, but great performance by him. I mean, he qualified fifth, and then with the two grid penalties, he actually started third, and they did the strategy right. He drove a great race, and he ends up on the podium, the two-time world champion, back on the podium for the first time in quite a while. He seemed pretty happy after the race, um, but yes, Fernando Alonso back on the podium. You Fernando Alonso fans. I hope you're happy. Woo, Fernando Alonso. Fourth place, Sergio Perez. Yeah, he had. They, Red Bull had a really good chance at the a double podium here, but they pitted Perez late. I don't think they needed to pit him late, uh, so I think that might have cost him a chance at a double podium, but Red Bull, those people, the F1, those teams, they know much more than me, so maybe I saw something they didn't or I didn't see something they saw. So maybe they had tire issues. I don't know. But that last pit stop, it was just like, um, maybe could have kept them out. But anyways, fourth place for Perez. He had a rough qualifying session. He was eliminated in Q2. First time he hasn't made Q3 since, I want to say the Netherlands. And, you know, Red Bull, of course, one of the top two teams right now, they're expected to make Q3 every week. But just not a great qualifying session for Perez. But he rebounds and he ends up fourth. Uh, so... Decent points day for him, and he also helps uh, Red Bull and the constructors, especially considering Botas had a bad day. Fifth place, Ocon. Really, really good points day for Alpine, especially with their battle with AlphaTauri for what is that, fifth in the constructors? Coming into today, I think that they were tied dead even on the day. And, you know, Pierre Gasly, he's really been he's really been carrying uh, AlphaTauri a bunch. And, you know, Yuki Tsunoda, he's... He's got, what, 20, 25 points around somewhere there. But Pierre Gasly, he's gotten the majority of the points for Alpha Tauri. And uh, Alpine, they've been pretty, on both ends, they've both been getting points. But a third place finish and a fifth place finish. And I don't think an Alpha Tauri finished in the points. No, they did not. So that's a huge points pickup for them. And that's a great day for both of them. Ocon with a fifth place finish. 
that's a really, really good day for them. A third and a fifth. Uh, you get a trophy with the podium, so they've got to be extremely happy with the result today. Sixth place, Lance Stroll for Aston Martin. Good day for him. I don't know where he started, but um, I feel like Aston Martin's been pretty, pretty meh this year. I mean, a couple podiums from Vettel, but that's about it. I mean, it feels like they're on the the barely getting points or they're just off. So uh, a little bit disappointing this year from Aston Martin, it feels like. I know that they've had a switch switch up kind of. They used to be racing point. They're, I don't know how big the changes are, but uh, after last year, what they finished fourth in the constructors, this has been a bit of a disappointing year, but a good, decent showing by Lance Stroll. Seventh place, Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. Eighth, uh, Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. Ferrari extends their lead on McLaren for third in the constructors' standings, especially with Norris only getting a couple of points today. So, uh, Ferrari, I think the gap coming into this race was 30-something points. So, this will definitely help, and it's going to be extremely difficult for McLaren to come back from that gap in these last two races. So, Ferrari is getting closer and closer to locking up third in the constructors'. Ninth, Lando Norris, he had a late puncture, had to come into the pits, get himself some new tires, is able to get ninth. Tenth place, Sebastian Vettel, a double points day for Aston Martin, speaking of them. Eleventh, uh, Pierre Gasly, I don't know what strategy he ran, but he started on the front row, he was in fourth for those first 10 to 15 laps, you know, Alonso got by him, Verstappen got by him, but he ends up out of the points, I'm... Did I miss something there? Was it the strategy? But that's a little disappointing considering how the day started. 12th place, Daniel Ricciardo. I kind of forgot about him today. I mean, I don't even think they mentioned him on TV. Yeah, he not a great day for him. 13th, Yuki Tsunoda. Uh, 14th, Kimi Raikkonen. 15th, Antonio Giovinazzi. Uh, 16th, Mick Schumacher. Uh, 17th, George Russell. 18th, Nikita Mazepin. And then two DNFs are Nicholas Latifi and Valtteri Bottas. Latifi, we talked about already, he had a blown tire and he could not make it all the way around, so he retired the car. Bottas, I don't know what his problem is. They kind of just said retire the car and he just did it. I, I don't fully understand the reasoning behind it, but um, yeah, uh, he, he retired. So, uh, yes, that was the end of the race. Uh, the points gap... In the drivers is eight points. Constructors, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I know it's much much closer than it was uh, last week because you know obviously Hamilton got 25, but Verstappen got 19, and Perez got what 12. So they cut it by a few points there. So good day for him, good day for Red Bull, but also a good day for Lewis Hamilton closing in that gap on Max Verstappen trying to get title number eight will be the most of the time, but thanks for watching this video. Uh, race was decent, not too exciting, nothing much happened, but at the same time, it wasn't too boring. There were some passes that were made. Um, you know, it was kind of fun to see Alonzo try to fight for that podium, and he eventually got it, but yeah, it was an all right race. Not as good as last week's race, I would say, but it was decent. Anyways, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching.